years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. From the coronavirus heaven of the world, New York City, it's the Ramble with Alex Bennett. And that's me. I'm going to be here until, uh, let's see here, midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. That's about an hour and a half from right now. Less than that. Oh, the show's almost over. <laughs> Good. Mm. Mm. Let me drink some coffee. As you know, we've been um, we've been uh, undergoing the coronavirus here in New York City, and uh, every day that I wake up, I worry about if I have a little cough. I go, <coughs> "Well, is that it?" You know, like tonight, I have uh, a little shortness of breath. But it's been we've had it's pollen season, okay? And today the pollen was uh, medium high. Okay, but that's enough to make me cough uh, and get all plugged up and uh, all of that. Uh, but I took my temperature. My temp I take my temperature every day. You should do that if you're in the, this virus-plagued time uh, to make sure that it's, you know, it's low. I mean, today, was, what was it? It was 97.8, something like that. So, and then 8.1. I, I do it twice. But, uh, you know, I, we're, living, we're living in a time of great fear. I mean, I, I don't know about you. I mean, I live in the fear because I happen to be of that age where um, it, it, it's out to get me. You know, if I, if I come down with the coronavirus, chances are I'm going to die. Okay? Um, so we're very careful about everything, you know. Uh, and I have not been out of here. I've only been out of this apartment for, what, what two times in the last six weeks, I think it is, something like that. That's, that's a lot of time to be spending in your apartment. I, luckily, I have this very large apartment, which I think we will do a tour of uh, next week and let you see how we live our daily lives here in isolation. Also, uh, I'm, I'm lucky that I have uh, Marjorie. She's an excellent companion to have on something like this. And uh, uh, I'm so happy to have her. Uh, and um, we haven't driven each other nuts yet. And neither one of us has tried to kill the other at any point. Did we have an argument? I think we have one fight. Uh, which is, I think, pretty good if you consider six weeks of not leaving the apartment for the most part. I mean, the only time we left the apartment was a couple of times you saw on the video where we left for maybe 15, 20 minutes and then came back here. Meanwhile, everything else is delivered to us, and uh, we just don't leave um, because I'm afraid of uh, catching it, and I'm afraid of her catching it because we're of that age where if you catch it, mm -hmm. goodbye, see you later, nice to know you. Been wonderful uh, having you around, folks. Uh, you know, um, it, it, because it, it's just that the age factor is is a real problem. And uh, if they have to intubate you, then there's about an eighty percent chance you're dead. Okay, so um, but I'm, I keep praying every day. Somebody's going to say, "Well, you know, we, well, they they are starting to find ways to keep people alive." Uh, this uh, uh, taking of the blood plasma with the antibodies in it and injecting it into people, flushing, pe flushing it into people, uh, seems to be working uh, on a rather consistent basis. But, you know, we have to, it's not enough of that blood plasma to go around, okay? We've got to find people with the antibodies, and then we've got to convince them to, you know, give blood. Which, if I found out I had the antibody, man, I'd be down there every other day having them suck blood out of me until I was turning pale because I would want to help people that way. It's the one thing you've got that can save other people's lives. But, uh, you know, the, the, the Redesivir, they're looking into that. It looks like it's maybe promising. It would be terrible if we found something like that, that pretty much was a, uh, oh, say, 80% cure of this thing, and all those people who are dead uh, wouldn't be dead. Well, who's dead? Well, let's look at the, uh, let's, 
Let's go to the, the map. I feel like a weather guy. I feel like a sports guy with the sports scores. Let's go to the map, okay? Oh, well, that's Five not it. Minutes. Hold on. That's not what we wanted. Jeez. Oh, God. <clears throat> Here we go. There we go. Okay, there's the map. That was the opening of the show over again there. Uh, I think you can see my arrow here, right? Isn't it, yeah, there's my arrow. See if I do, do that. See, you can see that. So, in the world, ladies and gentlemen, we're approaching twenty uh, two million eight hundred thousand. We're two million seven hundred ninety thousand nine hundred eighty six. So, before this show is over, that should, probably should turn. In fact, let's see if I were to refresh this, what would it uh, what would it do here? Would we be going over that 90 point? No, no we're still at 986. Okay, so that, that's the most current. And uh, come on, there come, here come the little spots of the different places in the world where we've got it. There we go, we're getting it. It's all coming in. Okay, so let's take a look at the United States. Right. By the way, total deaths, 195,920 people. Now, you know, the Spanish flu killed... 50 million. So we're never going to we're never going to achieve that. But then again, in those days we didn't have antibiotics, we didn't have uh, we didn't have in, 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 uh, inhalators, you know, things like that. Um, so we didn't have all the all the science that we've got now. So that's why the deaths were even greater. Uh, but anyway, I don't know why they called it the Spanish flu cuz it started in the United States. Never could figure that one out. Well, here we are in the US. Look at that number up there, folks. 890,524 people have been totally confirmed to have it. Total deaths, now at 51,017. Wow. Mm -hmm. 50 from 1,017. Okay. Well, ah, that, 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 that's depressing. It's really depressing. Of those, 16,646 are here in New, in New York City, okay? 16,646 in New York City. Now, that amounts to, if we look at that, that's, uh, that's, that's about a little, uh, a little under, one, let's say it's one quarter of all the people. And that's it's a better estimate. Actually, it's about a third of the deaths in the United States happen here in New York City. That's why I talk about this. You know, this is why I'm, why I am uh, um, always going and looking at New York and making a big deal about New York. Out in Nassau, 1518. Uh, in uh, Suffolk County, 993. God, I wish I, you know, I, I wish I didn't. Uh, I wish I didn't live in New York City right now. Because I feel like there's a gun to my head. I mean, it's getting better, but still, the total deaths in the United States, 51,017, okay? 16,646 of those in New York City, all right? So that's the total deaths there. The total deaths in Spain, which is number two, is only 22,000. Total deaths in Germany, 5,000. United Kingdom, 19,000, Turkey, 2,000. So we go back up to the United States here and look at what we got. Isn't that, uh, isn't that depressing? <laughs> that is really, really depressing. Um, you know, if we go down to the bottom here and see, these are in, in order, uh, the countries, okay? Uh, we can go down to the very bottom. If you want to go to the safest place on earth, it's Yemen, I guess. Uh, in Yemen, there is, uh, I think, uh, one case, something like that. Is that it? One case? Yeah. So anyway, one case in Yemen. So I'm moving to Yemen. That's where I'm going. I'm going to Yemen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm going to Yemen. Anyway, uh, there we go. So anyway, I'm wheezing tonight, so I figure now I have the coronavirus, and uh, by morning I'm going to be dead. <clears throat> but I'm not coughing. I'm just feeling like I'm a little short of breath. But I'll take, let me take another whiff of my, of my allergy medicine, which, by the way, doesn't help, but it makes me feel better that I'm doing it, okay? Um, 
So anyway, that's that's what it looks like around the uh, around the world. That's our latest map, and uh, it's uh, it's sad. It's really really sad uh, that we. Let me see here. I gotta get this. I want to. Where where is this? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I wanna I wanna get rid of this. Um, of this. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. I got I got it. I got to get the map smaller. I got to get the page smaller on my, uh, there we go. Okay. All right. Um, you know, I do everything here. I'm the bottle washer and everything else. So it's, uh, you know, whatever. Now I got a couple of things to show you today. Uh, and I want to, uh, you know, I'm going to show you something I showed you again. Uh, I showed you yesterday, but I'm going to show it after this because it has to do with the president and the statement he made yesterday uh, in which he suggested that we could cure the coronavirus maybe by massive amounts of ultraviolet light aimed at people, uh, which he does every day when he lies in that tanning bed of his. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, right? Um but uh, he also suggested that maybe we could, like, take the light and put it inside the people, right? And then we would kill the virus. And then he went on to even say something else stupid. He said, well, and, and seeing how as, uh, you know, uh, uh, Clorox and uh, things like that, uh, household disinfectants uh, will kill the virus in a matter of seconds, he said, why don't we inject people maybe with these things? So what it was really implying was it'd be a great idea if we injected people with Clorox or Lysol or any kind of disinfectant that we could lay our hands on, thereby leaving, you know, he has not the brightest amount of people, kind of people. He does not have a quality following, all right? And these people are stupid enough that they say, oh, I, got, I, th I think I have the coronavirus. I'm going to take some Clorox. Goodbye. See you later. That's all she wrote. Something, a doctor today when asked on one of the shows, uh, what do you think of him saying that? He, do you think there's any possibility that any of those things would work? I mean, they were doing the hypotheticals. And the doctor said, you know, we always tell people, make sure you keep Clorox and disinfectants and all those things that you use to clean the house with away from children so they won't swallow them and kill themselves. He said, isn't that enough to know they're not good for you? So anyway, but anyway, the president did that, okay, and he's gotten a lot of heat for it. Even his pal Drudge had a big picture of a bottle of Clorox on the Drudge Report and uh, just big headlines about Trump, you know, suggesting that you use Clorox and you use disinfectants, and that would maybe cure the coronavirus. Well, today the president had to answer the press on these things, and uh, that he did. And here was his answer. And I want, you, I want you to listen closely, because after I'm through, I'm going to play what he said yesterday and parse that against what he says here. No, I was asking a question sarcastically to reporters like you, just to see what would happen. Now, disinfectant for doing this, maybe on the hands, would work. And I was asking the question of the gentleman who was there yesterday, Bill, because when they say that something will last three or four hours or six hours, but if the sun is out or if they use disinfectant, it goes away in less than a minute. Did you hear about this yesterday? But I was asking a sarcastic and a very sarcastic question to the reporters in the room about disinfectant on the inside. But it does kill it, and it would kill it on the hands, and that would make things much better. That was done in the form of a sarcastic question to the reporters. So you were okay. asking your medical experts to look into it? Uh, really no, 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 no. To look into whether or not sun and disinfectant on the hands, but whether or not sun can help us. Because, I mean, he came in yesterday and he said they've done a big study. This is a study. This isn't where he hasn't done it. This is where they've come in with a final report that sun has a massive impact negatively on this fiber. In other words, it does not live well with humidity, and it doesn't live well with sun, sunlight, heat. 
doesn't live well with heat and sun and disinfectant. And that's what I brought out. And I thought it was clear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Now, you heard his excuse. It was sarcastic. He was only referring to the report. Blah, 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 blah. You heard what he said. You heard what his excuse was for what he did yesterday. It was just meant to be a joke. It was meant to be sarcastic for the sake of the press and that, uh, you know, and uh, he denied that in any way he was implying that this would maybe, you know, whatever. You just heard what he said. Okay, play that against this. So I ask Bill a question that probably some of you are thinking of if you're totally into that world, which I find to be very interesting. So supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light, and I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that, too. Sounds interesting. We'll the right, folks to right. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or or almost a cleaning, because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs, so it'd be interesting to check that, so that you're going to have to use medical doctors with, but it sounds, it sounds interesting to me. Okay, now, you heard what he said earlier, and you heard what he said now. Now, maybe I don't get sarcasm, okay? Maybe I don't understand what sarcasm is. But from my brief understanding of what sarcasm is supposed to be, I didn't hear any sarcasm there, okay? Uh, he was seriously asking the doctor to check in to his theory and see if that might be a possibility because, you know, he'll get, he want, he's, he'll get the Nobel Prize for medicine if, he do, if it works, you know. I can't, you know, it's very hard to believe, Okay. Uh, so when you when you take his, the, what he did today, only compounded the lie by trying to change what he had said, and what this dare I say moron doesn't seem to understand is that when he does something like he did yesterday, and when he does something like he does today, he is on the record. You know. This isn't like something where we took a tape and then we cut it up to make him say what he was going to we wanted him to say. He, we don't have to do that. He says these things all on his very own. And you know, it, it is just it's amazing the kind of pathological liar this man is that I think he honestly believes that yesterday he was being sarcastic. Oh, I was just trying to get it you 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 news people, you know, you fake news people. Um, just amazing. By the way, one other thing I noticed, uh, I don't know if you noticed it, the name of the guy yesterday who gave the report on sunlight and the virus was Bill Bryan. He happens to be the science and technology director of the Department of Homeland Security. His name is Bill Bryan. Uh, when, uh, it, uh, let me just play the beginning of that once again. Okay, just the very beginning of it, and listen what he refers to the guy as. So I asked Bill a question that probably some of you. Did you hear that? I'll play. I can play it again for you. So I asked Bill a question that. Probably I asked Phil. <laughs> he doesn't even know the guy's name. Oh boy. God, folks. I mean. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't think Joe Biden's any great shakes, right? But crying out loud, we can't let this guy be president again. Uh, he, he, you know, it's one thing to 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 do all kinds of things which 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 put us somewhat in harm's way, but to do something this massive that's killing all of us, and and to have this guy in charge of it is pathetic, and something's got to be done about it. I mean, he, the, the, uh, you know, I don't know how much longer I have to live. I could live four years. I could live two years. I could live 10 years. 
But let's say I'm going to only live about four years. Please don't let me have to live it under Trump. Please don't let me go out this way. It's, it, it's just not fair. It's not fair at all. Okay? Anyway, I'm going to start up the Skype lines here. Uh, and at some point, I may, have to, I may have to run off to the bathroom tonight. I don't know. I've been having, I've been having problems with my prostate today, you know. Uh, I, I, I wrote my, uh, the nurse and I said, yeah, I'm having trouble with the peeing and the things and like that and the urgency to pee. And she said, oh, well, don't worry about it. That's because the, uh, the radiation does that. The seeds do that. So uh, everything I'm having happen to me that's uncomfortable is, is natural, according to her. All right. So anyway, let me turn on the, uh, my Skype lines here. Well, wait a minute. Here comes Brian Neary. Wait a minute, we'll let Brian come here for a second, and then I'll, I want to go up here, and I want to, uh, I want to, uh, I got to, uh, where, where do I, where do I turn my, my thing on here? Oh, well, here, uh, somebody else is calling, Sabrina McKenney. Who is Sabrina McKenney? Do I know her? Um, no. Uh, let me see here. Rob Alfano. Rob Alfano. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have to go to um, who do I have here now? I have Rob and I have uh, let me see here. Phil Myers coming in. Let me uh, wait. Oh, I know who Sabrina McKenney is. Of course, it's Jason McKenney's wife. Uh, there's Kevin. I'm going to have to do all these first. There we go with that. Um, okay. How many have we got here? Okay, now let me start putting these people all... Oh, here we go. Josh Wheeler. Okay. Uh, and uh, Charlie Wallace. Let me see here. <laughs> Hold on a second here. Do, uh, do we have everybody so far? Uh, jo uh, Josh has got to get in there. Yeah, here comes uh, Sibby Itty. Boy, everybody, I'm just going to take me a half hour just to get these people uh, all put in a space on here. Charlie Wallace, okay. Charlie, all right, okay. Let me, uh, let me, let me go here, and we'll try starting first of all. Uh, we have a bunch of people from last night, so that's fine. Then I got to add in the, uh, let me see, in the sixth place, I'll put Rob, well, wait a minute, hold on a second. Cancel. Hold on a moment. Uh, six. Oh, uh, four. Fourth place. That's what I want. We will put Rob Alfano. Let me see here. Here comes Rob. Wait a minute. Rob Alfano. Okay. All right. There we go. Is Rob? There we go. Then uh, let me see here. Alan Kroger. All right. Now I got to go here down to. Uh, uh, let me see. Six. Seven, I will do um, Webhead. Oh, let's, who's here? Let's see here. Alan Kroger. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, Charlie Wallace. Do I have Charlie Wallace well, up there? I've been on all week. We got so no, 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 you're fine. You're fine. You're fine, Charlie. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to find out who I've got here and who I don't have here. Don't tell me, uh, Phil. I, I'm. Uh, I have to figure this out for myself. Alan Kroger uh, is here. I think there he is, and who else do we have that I didn't put in here? We put Rob's in here. Uh, uh, oh, Jeff, Jeff's in here. Who who don't we have in here? I don't know. Uh, wait, we have uh, Kroger. Okay, um, let me see here. We have one. Wait a minute. We have one, two, three, four, five. Oh, Jason, Jason, Jason McKinney. Okay, hold on a second. Yeah, wait a minute, J Jason. I gotta know what your what name are you using? Three a.m. Three a.m. There we go. Okay, I think we got everybody that's supposed to be there. Okay, hello everybody. Hello there. Let me make sure now. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. 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 I, there are two people I don't have in here somehow. Who don't I have in here? Uh, oh, wait. Oh, I see Sibby Itty. Okay, I got to get Sibby. Hold on. Hold on. We're, we're, we're going to get to all of you. Hold on a second. Uh, let me see here. Nine would be Sibby Itty, which is, 
Uh, let's see here. He's listed as uh, Sibby Eddie, I would imagine. Wait a minute. Jo Josh. Well, Josh, we got to put in here. Okay. And then Sibby Itty. Um, let me see here. And then Sibby Itty, um, who is, what, do you, what, what name do you go under, Sibby? Oh, there we go. I see him. I see him. I see him. I got him. Okay. All right. Okay, all right, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh. Ha, ha, ha. Boy, you guys gangbang me for crying out loud. Anyway, good evening to all of you. How are you? You're <laughs> rah, 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 rah. Yeah. Um, so, um, Phil, <laughs> let, me just, uh, let me just start with you. Bill, you heard? Miller, Phil. Did you just hear what I played earlier? Yeah. Uh huh. Um, uh, you uh, know, mass hysteria does a crazy thing. You know, the guy, the guy says that uh, he was joking. You don't want to leave it at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you do. Obviously, you do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I never seen so much bullshit over such a small thing can, can you imagine two days ago if somebody told you to drink lysol you'd look at them like they were nuts now the president is saying well maybe it would work for cleaning you know cleaning surfaces and stuff you take it out of context you mm -hmm. you, 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 you jump on his every word you know why don't you just uh, go after joe biden because he's a molester okay you know? now it's your oh, now now it's jason's turn jason you know, I, I'm actually going to have to side with Phil to the tiniest bit. <laughs> they are looking at putting in respirators that have LED lights built into right. them to generate uh, ultraviolet rays. Right. And there are things that they are going to, and there probably will eventually become some type of disinfectant that you will inhale into your lungs to help kill a virus that you have going on in there, like a, an, an inhalant antibiotic. My so question he's not that nuts. The, the biggest thing with Trump, he just needs to keep his mouth shut. If he were to keep his mouth shut, he would look so much better right now. Charlie? Uh, the problem is any dosage of, of infectant that would be strong enough to kill a virus will kill a human being. There is no dose of, of, of infectant that will not kill a human being today. that will kill a virus. Today. No, well, today and, and probably possibly tomorrow. I mean, you would think. That but we would have learned. Something that, that could work Jason? Ultraviolet that will not kill a human being, that will kill a virus. Uh, yes, Rob. So I have to ask Jason if he's giving Trump that much credit for being that forward of a thinker to be able to think about the future and maybe the ability for a disinfectant to be able to work that way. No, I think he... Just you know, he was he was opening his mouth at the wrong time and saying the wrong things. But I I really think that eventually there could be some type of inhalant that you would take that would almost kind of act. Well, as if that were true, if that were true, Jason, you know, it's not like we haven't lived with flus in the past, uh, and and this particular form of um, of of fixing the it's problem. It's not a flu. It, it, it's a coronavirus. But, but it's a, it, it is a flu. Uh, the, the other flus we've gotten that come along have been, have been coronaviruses as well. I, I don't think that the flu's a coronavirus. I think the, the, I, I think the coronavirus is a flu. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Brian Neary would know. Yeah, it's a, it's a strain of the flu. Okay. It's a novel. The novel is different, though. The novel what, what, what does novel mean? I keep hearing novel. Doesn't that just mean new? It's different than a short story. <laughs> what? It is a new coronavirus. Yeah, um, uh, but I mean, I mean, am I, am I right, Brian? I mean, if, if a disinfectant of some sort would work on this kind of thing, wouldn't they? I mean, people die every year of the flu because of respiratory illnesses. Wouldn't they have come up with this before? Or at least yeah. been testing something uh -huh. like that in the past. And, and I mean, even like the UV, the UV stuff is all very, very small doses. You know, like like you guys were saying that night, you know, like the toothbrush with the UV cleaner and all that stuff. So, so yeah. Low dosage, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah UV in Trump's uh, um, tanning uh -huh. booth wouldn't touch the <laughs> coronavirus. 
<laughs> you know, it, but that's the thing. At the same time, I think it's funny how he's saying how, oh, well, you know, it's summertime's coming out, so the sun's going to come out. The sun hasn't been coming out during the winter time. Well, wait a minute. Know, also, the, also the, the sun, the, the sun is going to kill it, and it's not happening in Florida. It's not happening in Australia. Well, no, it's but, not happening but in Iran. It's the heat and humidity. But then he forgets it's running rampant in Singapore, where it's hot and humid. Yeah, right. You know, and where it's also hot. Yeah, India, where it's eighty degrees in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, 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 <laughs> it is. It's amazing. It's just amazing. Uh, you know, um, Alan, what do you think? You're sitting there in your car. Are you, now, you, I saw you vaping. Were you vaping pot or were you vaping cigarettes? <laughs> I wish I was vaping pot. I'm just like, you know, uh, being uh, sitting around and not, not at work any longer, working at home. I can do whatever I can. Well, please. Yeah, like, right. Run my underwear. Exactly. And, exactly. You know, exactly. <laughs> Whoops. Wait a minute, folks. I'm sorry for all these Skype things there. I have to. Let's see if we can get Tony to come up here. Uh, uh, it may or may not be possible. Let me see here. Yes, uh, yes, Charlie. Yeah. I just want to point out that we've got 60,000, I and mean, we've got 2,000 people a day dying in the U.S. That's 60,000 people during the month of April, 30 yeah. days in the month of April. We're going to have over 60,000 people die in the U.S. That's just That's a normal Tony, I'm, Tony, I'm, I'm going to have to get rid of you because one extra person makes it so the others, some of the others don't work. Okay. Okay? So have a nice weekend. Well, yes, nope. have a nice weekend. Right, so if we don't do shelter in place, that number's going to double or triple. Yeah. We're going to try for 120,000 deaths in May. Yeah. Oh, by yeah, the way, by the way, let me just say here for a moment. How many, how many people died so far from Phil? Uh, may I say so, I have to say something here? Okay. Can I say something to yes. anybody else who's trying to call? Don't. Okay, because when we get more than this amount of people in here, we got problems. Yeah, it blacks out some of the other people and so on and so forth. Skype sucks. Anyway, yes, Phil. Uh, I. I asked the question and I forgot what it was. Oh, how many, how many people so far since Trump made that announcement have died from taking a, a drinking Lysol or injecting it? Six. That's a good question. Remember, remember they had that movie? They had that movie a while back. Remember the, the kid? It was like a football movie, the high school kid, and the kid was lying in the middle of the street, they, yeah. you know, and they let the cars drive over them. Remember? And they had people die from stupid stuff like that. Uh, yeah, remember same thing with the Tide Pods. Remember oh. the people, oh, yeah. the kids tide eating pods. the Tide Pods? Did you guys get that, that thing I sent with the guy in uh, mainlining Lysol and Clorox? Phil, would you, would you, would you, uh, would you, um, would you, would you, would you, would you admit that the president sets the tone for the country and it has a great influence on what people think and what they hear and what they believe and so on? Sure. Sure. And it's don't you think that that comes that comes with gr that comes with great responsibility? Yeah. Oh yeah. Do you think he now, is in he he has that responsibility? He has a different style. You know what? You know, style different is? style isn't killing people, Phil. <laughs> he, uh, you know, what's his name in Croton is killing himself smoking that crap. But you know, what Trump does, his style. And uh, he does it in his cabinet meetings is to throw out ideas and have people bounce them back and forth. So that's what he did. Phil, he barely uh, stays uh, awake at his cabinet meetings. OK, in there. Have, there. In there. Uh -huh. have you been in one of his cabinet meetings? I'm sure you have. Yes, I have. You know, yeah. Yeah. Phil was putting down carpet during it and he heard it. Cabinet <laughs> is the medicine cabinet. It's a heap. It's a heap. <laughs> <laughs> so, Phil, I, I, I heard you say that last night. I wasn't on last night. And I, when you said something to the effect of the president is unfiltered, right? Yes. Or there's something to that effect. Yes. Do you know that is childhood behavior? And I, I could tell you a funny story. When I was a kid, my father used to get gifts from his customers all the time. And one day, we were like seven, eight years old, and we went over to my aunt's house. It was a holiday or whatever. And my mother re-gifted a wallet that my father had given. My father, my brother, was sitting around the table when the gift was given to whomever. And he went, hey, mom, look, uh, daddy has one just like that. 
<laughs> and, and that's it's that same kind of thing. It's it's childish behavior to just be unfettered in what you say. The guy didn't know that it, that was the same wallet that he was being regifted. But the point being that you that's not presidential for someone to be completely just throw stuff but, out there. But he didn't run as being presidential. He ran as being a disruptor and being a child, being a child. Well, Phil, 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 well, Phil, Phil, the job of a president is not to be a disruptor, but to be uh, be a person who in, in, encourages people and gives them hope. And and well, and it does and, about 60 million people. Uh, the other 60 million that didn't vote for him, he doesn't. Wait encourage. a minute, uh, uh, Phil, a little little more than another 60 million. The other there were th three million more people who voted for her uh, than voted for him. Most of those guys were uh, dead. Fake. Yeah. OK. Yeah. All right, Phil. All right, Phil, if you want to continue looking like a complete and utter moron nice. on this program, who am I to stop you? Hey, uh, you know, uh, every show's got to have its moron. Salt. And if it weren't for you, it would be me. So, you know. Thank you. You're Abbott. He's Costello. You know, I wonder if Sibby Itty applies for an email address that is a comeback with a recommendation like Sibby Itty 714, uh, or does it really just give him the email? You know, how many Sibby Itties are there? Uh, you know, uh, well, you do, wait a minute. There may be Sibby Itties in other countries, right, Sibby? No, it is is a family name, and it's a very, um, uh, it's a unique name. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they're my father. You know, it's from my father's side. Like seventy five or eighty families. It's they own the whole that whole town. Mm -hmm. So there's everybody is an eighty there. So I am the only city eighty, of course. So yeah. it's pretty long unique. A long time. Oh, that's what that would have taken. <laughs> <laughs> now you re realize that since February twenty eighth. Which is how many months ago? It's uh, two months ago, is it? Yeah, almost. Yeah. We've well, gone from something like 64 people dying of the coronavirus to over 50,000 yep. in this country. That's a that's pretty pretty gobsmacking. I mean, it, you know, it. it, it how many? What's the percentage of, of over 60 that have died? I have uh, no idea, Phil. I don't sit here with the I'm statistics, so but I would say I would say that it's quite high. Yeah, uh, you know they're probably just trying to, you know, make room for uh, young people. I, I don't find that funny, Phil. As somebody who's eighty, I don't find that funny. Okay, I, I, I find that insulting. Yes, Jason. So I, I have to like I'm so far behind on the show right now. I'm just at St. Patrick's Day actually, and just listening to Phil talk back then about minimizing this the is so small and minuscule. It's just funny and to still hear you still toting the same line. It's like, dude, I'll have how many people have you, died? I'll have yeah. to send you the uh, thing about uh, Pelosi and, uh, and and not thinking. Oh, she went to Chinatown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and trying to make yeah, it not to be a racist that. thing. Sorry, it was a little bit different. I making it a racist thing, Phil. It, it was racist. It wasn't here yet. It wasn't here yet. And that's what Trump said, and that's what I said. Alex, you need some new promos. You need to get some old promos of Phil saying that the stuff is nothing. Yeah, put yeah. all those together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I remember him telling me that when I said that this, uh, that I, I was worried about this virus and what it was going to do. He kept calling me an alarmist, alarmist, and that oh yeah, we 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 are afraid of everything. Everything's out to get us. You you belittled me for it, Phil. Yes, and I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> hey, Phil, what blood type are you? Uh, oh, I think. Oh, just wonder if you're a. Just, that's just my personality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I just it, it. And here in New York, I mean, you know, everywhere else in the country, yeah, you've got a problem too. In fact, it, uh, the the problem is expanding in other parts of the country now. It's getting worse in other parts of the country. Uh, but uh, here, I mean, the thing was uh, the Mitch McConnell comment yesterday that all the states that have the highest incidents of of deaths and coronavirus uh, are blue states. And that's why they should have to file for bankruptcy. Because if you're a blue state, uh, you don't deserve to live. That's basically what M Mitch McConnell was saying. 
Yay. Kyle for back or as I like to call him, Mitch Trump's bitch. Yes, uh, Charlie. Moscow Mitch. Yes, Charlie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Texas probably. Uh, or, I know Texas does not have any result, any tests, no test kits. You cannot get tested for the virus in Texas. So we could have ten times as many deaths as we're reporting because nobody can get tested. Yeah, yeah. And I think the red it's states just aren't tests. testing people. Yeah, but I mean, that's why we don't, we don't know how many deaths they've had, how many cases they have. Well, I found Mitch McConnell's statement to be absolutely insulting and terrible and inhumane. I, you know. Never. Huh? I, never. How insulting. What? We, know, we, Jesus we, Christ. What? I can't hear what you're saying, Phil. Let him eat cake. Yeah. I, I, did, I, you know, everything's insulting. Everything hurts. Words hurt. You know, I, I don't, I don't get you guys. You know, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. There, there, are there, there, there are, uh, what? There are nine other people here who don't get you. Yeah. The day is going to come when there's a Democrat in the White House, and I'm dying to hear the way you react to those kinds of things. Hey, had you ever heard me say anything negative about Obama? Yes, uh, absolutely. Issues? <laughs> what? I yes, we've heard negative. you say negative things about Obama. Oh. I disagreed with some of his positions. <laughs> but I didn't call him an orange uh, orangutan. I didn't he wasn't. Uh, of his ears. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't do any of those. You know, you know what I wish? I wish if, if Trump would do only one thing that would improve my opinion of him. That when he goes Shut into up. that tanning booth, don't put that little thing over your eyes because you've got the this white, you got this yeah. white clown face here. You know, it's not tanning booth. It's a spray on. So you know, you walk in, they spray you with a, you know, with one. Well, wait, 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 wait. Then they could, the then they could, then somebody should put makeup around his eyes so he doesn't look like a raccoon. <laughs> Maybe he's allergic to the makeup, and that's why they don't do it. Mm. Well, anyway, yeah. So uh, gets up in the morning, walks into a booth. Some guy sprays him down with a hose, and uh, you know, then he walks out and meets his day. Yeah, well, it's better than going. It's kind of like going to Russia and getting hookers to pee on you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to turn. Turn the temperature up. Well, let's turn let's turn to Josh Wheeler. Uh, let's turn to Josh Wheeler and get his opinion on the events of the day. Yes, Josh. Uh, I haven't watched any news today, so I don't know. Oh, okay. How about the news yesterday? I didn't watch any news yesterday either. Uh, do you realize there's a coronavirus going on, Josh? Yeah, but I don't really care. <laughs> I'm watching the I'm I'm watching the NFL draft. <laughs> yes, right. Let's hope there'll be a season. Is, is there a draft? I thought it was in the guy's basement. Yeah, I know he's doing yeah. it from the basement. But yeah. he's doing it. You know. Uh yes, Jason. Hey, so I, I was just curious if Josh had an opinion on if Biden won and they're saying how he, they probably want to pick Camilla Harris to be his running mate, but to try to put her on the Supreme Court. What do you feel about her qualifications? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I'm not really that impressed with her as a senator, but I mean, I don't know about a Supreme Court <clears throat> justice. Because I mean, she was, she was what the attorney general or something for yeah, uh, yeah. California. Attorney general. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm yeah. sure she's qualified enough. I mean, I I don't know, I don't remember her being a judge before, uh, which which isn't required. No, um, and I wouldn't have a problem with that. Someone having not been one before, uh, it's okay. Is that precedented or no? Do you know or no? Like, well, um, yeah, there's definitely been people that, you know, weren't judges before. Huh. Um, people that weren't even lawyers. Harris was a district attorney of San Francisco. Yeah. But then she, she was uh, attorney general of the state of California. Yeah. Then she became a senator. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I believe she's a lawyer. Yeah, she's a lawyer. By profession. Yeah. 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 But she also has some, like, shady shit about, like, uh, 
covering up stuff about whether there was evidence that wasn't presented and stuff for a while, wasn't there? Uh, and, uh, I think no. Tulsi Gabbert kind of went after her about and just never yeah. really uh, caught fire. She didn't uh, prosecute uh, cop killers uh, uh, for <laughs> uh, with death, death penalty. That was uh, the, the first thing she did as a DA in San Francisco. Uh, I don't think that's uh, an issue as far as the public is concerned. But Me? Uh, but, you know, Harris didn't even win uh, uh, California, uh, you know, she, uh, during the primaries. Uh, she, uh, she didn't do too well. Yeah, uh, why, why do you think he's so pressed on that, too? Right, Like, right after he's getting, you know, when uh, uh, Bernie's getting out, he, you know, pretty much announced right away he's going to have a woman. Because yeah, he I wants to sniff her hair. <laughs> <laughs> I need some hair to sniff during Shit, that. I just stand up. Is it is it like have you guys seen that before where somebody right away No, is... but it, it, it's it's time though. That's what it is. It's the only way he'll remember what he said. sibby has got his hand up. Yes, Sibby. Yeah, I think uh, there was some back home deals that was done uh, with Biden mm-hmm. and Jim Clyburn. <laughs> And Jim Clyburn, if you remember, South Carolina is, was his comeback, just like McCain's in 2008. McCain was nowhere in, in, when he was running for primary. Huckabee was the one who was winning every place. And McCain, South Carolina started his ascent, and it, he just went on to get the nomination. The same way I think Biden had the same plan. And I think he cut a deal with uh, Jim Clyburn, where Clyburn made him promise that he's going to pick an African-American woman or women of color as his running mate in uh, in return for his support. And Biden said yes. That's the only reason Biden came out and said, yes, I'm going to pick a woman. Otherwise, he could have just said just exactly what, what Bernie said that, yeah, I would consider. He never said I would consider. He said I will. So that kind of, he, he kind of cut his arms because I believe at this time, Cuomo would have been a perfect match for him to be running as a you know vice president. Just like Biden was chosen as a vice president at the time by Obama because of I, the whole, I, don't, I don't think you know the Russia's yeah. annexation of Crimea. So you remember that time, Sibby. I I think that uh, Andrew Cuomo does not want to run for president right now. No. Exactly. Well, I think he wants to finish the job he has to do here with this virus and everything, and I think that he'll he'll entertain that idea four years from now. And, and uh, the only reason why Cuomo is even a uh, uh, thing right now is just because they play him every day on the news well also you know, because be, you know, uh, he uh, mentioned it, that before it, they were playing yeah. him on the news every day that it was a woman it, and it really it is a woman's turn right now you know we've been around for how long and they're 52 percent of the population why haven't they been a president you know you look at some, the I countries think, that I, are yeah, this I, pandemic look, the best let's be are run by women let's be honest yeah. men have fucked up this country and now it's right? time for women to do the same thing <laughs> they, they prove us right I think it's the wrong reason but why he wants the women to be his own there, there's plenty of qualified That's women out there there's plenty I don't like the whole qualified women part. out there who are just as qualified as any man yeah. out there who could yeah. do it and I, me personally I, I know Charlie probably disagrees with me but I think Tulsi is you know a good one she's a centrist she's young you know she is of color you know uh, I like her. I think she should be. You like her because you get a boner watching her. <laughs> I, I like her because she's the same age as me. <laughs> Andrew Yang uh, could do it. He could just claim to be a woman. Yeah, but uh, but Probably. I think I think I think uh, there's a good chance. I I think number one, if Biden, let's say Biden runs, let's say Biden wins. Okay, uh, yeah. Biden is not going to run for a second term. I think he's he's, al- he's, al- yeah. he's already said that. Which means that it's open, and I think that if uh, if Cuomo to decides to run, I've got to tell you, you say, well, this guy's been on every day, and that's why people are talking about him. Yes, of course, but we've also gotten to know how communicative he is and how good a communicator he is, and that if he ran for president, there's almost no Republican out there who could beat him because he's got he's got the skills. Because if you don't like me, I'll break your legs. Is that what you're walking <laughs> oh, for? Oh, see, now man? there's that Italian yeah. stereotype. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Hey, 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 but hey. By the time, even if even if you're thinking that way, by the time 2024 rolls in, Cuomo would be forgotten. Just like, remember, 
the the Jersey uh, governor. I'm trying to remember his name. You know, the, oh, the Republican right, governor. Right. He I'll tell you there. what, nobody forgot uh, Giuliani. I mean, he went nuts. But I mean, but, he was America's mayor for a no, very long time. But the New Jersey governor before uh, uh, Murphy. Christ yeah, cr Christy. Yeah. Christy. Yes. Christy, yeah. Christy. Well, actually, he actually. Be, he was considered to be a front runner, but he chose not to run in 2012. Actually, Remember, he, that, yeah. He lost his time. But actually. And by the time 2016 came, he was a forgotten hero. But to, to around 2012, he was considered to be a pretty good candidate. That's what I believe, because I was in Jersey for a while, so I remember him. He was well-liked by everybody, but then he became a buffoon. Yeah, yeah, as, as they all seem to become after a while. Um, yeah. You know, um, but uh, I, I just uh, think that there's, a, you know, I still think there's a good chance for Cuomo because... He has the goods. He has the ability to communicate with an audience, and to look you straight into that camera and to 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 literally seduce you. Okay, uh, yeah. I think that if he runs, he will win, uh, and I think that if he has four years and is followed by Gavin Newsom, the Republicans haven't got a chance for sixteen years. You know, because I think Newsom, again, is another stealth candidate, good-looking, well-spoken, uh, you know, presidential, all right? right? It, it, it's going to be a woman, so you can't even – he's already said it. So Yeah, he already said it. He can't go back. It, it's and probably going to be like – it, it either may be uh, – what's your name from Wisconsin or my governor, Gretchen Whitmer. Well, you see, I think that – I think there's something wrong with – Biden saying it's going to be a woman. He's saying yes. that because he wants to keep everybody yep. happy. But the yep. fact is, if you can't find a woman that's as good as some guy you could get, your only consideration could be who can do the job, not that's is right. it a woman or is that's it right. a black but woman. You can, though. You can, though, Alex. You can find a woman just as good as a man. Yeah, well, <clears throat> you know, I mean, I it's, think it's, America has... And that's what that's where you need to start standing up and making the fight to, you know, for people who might listen to you to say, you know what, this is who we picked. It's a woman. Go for it. You know, that that's what we need. It's about time. It, it's about time, but we have to just consider what happened in 08. Obama was, you know, he was a front runner. Everybody liked him, but everyone has questions about his experience in international affairs I, and then I, the yeah. whole russia thing I, happened in the Crimea, I, and mccain yeah. says i'm going to suspend my campaign and then biden comes in i'll, I'll biden agree with experience. you i'll agree with josh uh when i hear that we've got a, a woman on a baseball team or a football team okay yeah, i mean I, I mean i get so sick of hearing it. it's the most liberal thing ever oh, it's time for a woman you don't you, you can find a woman i mean to do everything if you, a woman, okay, fine. Find me a Pol fucking woman. Why, why, I'm, 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 I'm watching. You talk funny. Find me a fucking woman to play quarterback in the NFL. <laughs> that's not talking. what politics is, dude. That's, well, that's not what that's it not is. What you're it's saying. two that's different this fucking is, jobs. This is, this is the liberal pansy whamsy shit man. that goes down. It, that, that's not pansy whamsy shit. It's fucking about well, using your goddamn brain. It's fuck not you, man. You know what? I'm not going to put up with this bullshit. You can't even talk on this fucking show anymore without getting interrupted. You know what I mean? I sit here quietly. Fuck this. Yeah, man. let him finish. Let him finish. Yeah. Oh, he hung up. He left. He, he left. I think I'm the person that he talks about that he doesn't like on the show, even though I call in like once a month. No, no, no. Sorry. No. Probably no. me. No. But no, it's it's me and you. Yeah. Hey, um, I have. No, a, wait a, a minute. I wait but before we go any further. I think it makes a good point. You know that when somebody is talking, let him talk, and don't interrupt him. Because uh, I, I talked to Josh about this off the air uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he was very bothered by that, you know, that, wow. he, he, that he doesn't jump in, and when he jumps and starts talking, everybody starts interrupting him. And I agree that we should give space, and, and uh, when somebody else is talking, to let them finish what they're saying. This is not a Trump press conference where you're a reporter asking a question, and when you've said two words, he suddenly starts answering the question and drowning you out. You know, uh, this is not the way we should do it here. And if, if, if Josh is listening, um, I really apologize for... Uh, for the, for that incident happening to you, you know. Uh, anyway, where are we? Yes. I had my hand up. Yes, Phil. 
Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it gives me pause when I think about Biden boxing himself in uh, early on with the candidate uh, saying that he's going to choose a woman. Is this an example of the kind of missteps that he would make as president, uh, that he doesn't think ahead and give himself uh, the channels that he needs to uh, to ride down? Now, you know, Al is saying no, uh, that, that he doesn't agree. But uh, I think Sibby agrees with me that this this was a misstep on Biden's part. Uh, over. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, yes, Jeff. I I'm like pretty negative about him uh, voting and trying to become president. Uh, you know, Biden for for I don't know whatever reason he's just not the strongest candidate, even though he's. The mm-hmm. candidate right now for the Democrats, and I, you know the idea about whether or not he's planning on on bringing a woman doesn't bother me at all. I think it's more important at this point what he has to say, and he's pretty much taken the strategy to keep his mouth shut. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think about that? I agree. But, but do you think he's going to have the right people there to help him with these decisions? I think that's the big thing. Oh, he, he knows doesn't. all the people to to help him make the decisions. Uh, yep, Brian. Brian. Oh, that's what I was trying to say. Brian, are you talking? No. Oh, oh, Rob's I'm, I'm looking at the angle. wrong screen. Yeah. Okay. What were you going to say, Brian? Oh, it, Rob. No, Brian had his hand up. Oh, no. No, I was just saying if he's going to have the right people with him. That's all. Okay, Rob have his hand up? I can't see here that well. Yes, Yes. Yeah, I I was going to say that before uh, Josh left, I agree with what he was saying. I think a woman could be a president, a vice president, or whatever. But this is not affirmative action. We pick the best person for the job. If it's a woman, great. If it's not a woman, then it's not. And and I, it's just you know this is not a game. Yes, it is. Exactly. All right, <laughs> Jason. So uh, I do agree with Rob. At the same time, but you can find a woman who can do the job just the same. Who can be the, you know, it, and you don't even. It, it's not you know. Yes, there is a difference between men and women. You want to talk about throwing bricks? Okay, I'm sorry. The majority of men are going to be able to throw bricks a hell of a lot longer than a man could. You want to talk about being a quarterback? Yes, a man can do a hell of a lot better of a job normally because you're going to have more uh, muscle and bone ratio than a woman is going to have. But th- this is just using your brain. The brain is the same in a man and a woman. You know, we as men need to get over oh, That's a woman. She can't do it. We need to get over that. And maybe that's what it needs to be is you need to have a president who is going to run and have a woman be there to put her in the spotlight to show that she can do just the same good of a job so that the next time you're going to vote for that woman where you're still voting for that man that you voted for the last time. It, it, it's a sexist thing, and I, I'm just I'm getting sick and tired of it. I, you know, well, I agree. I, I and, agree. I agree that it's sexist, but, I mean, for all my life, I've believed in the equality of women for two reasons. Number one, that I believe that everybody should be treated the same way and also because it would get me laid so uh yes uh charlie yeah um talking about getting the best person for the job you cannot tell me that every four years they always get the best person for the job (laughs) because i'm sorry i don't think tim kane was the best person for the job in 2016 Okay, uh, yeah. mm-hmm. Brian, I, and I, I, you know, I, I, I agree with. I go to you next, Brian. Uh, I, uh, I agree with you, Charlie. Uh, but mm-hmm. the fact is, we're talking politics here. We're not talking about legit, uh, legitimate uh, consideration of people who are qualified to do the job. You know, otherwise, there's no way Trump would be president right now. All right. Uh, if, if if the only qualification, but it's all politics. It's all playing politics and knowing how to play politics. Uh, yes, Brian. So I don't know if you guys have had <clears throat> women, uh, female bosses before, but yeah. I've had two two of the last three bosses were women, and then mm-hmm. and I've had very good experiences with them, as in very uh, compromising and supportive and those type of things. Where when I've had a a couple of the last male bosses, 
they really want control. They're really adamant about things. They won't listen. So maybe those are just the individuals I've had. But I like that kind of compromise when I have those type of supporting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what do you, what do you, what's your, <laughs> what do you think I'm <laughs> for? Well, because to, in a way that almost sounds as prejudiced the other way, because it's almost like stereotyping. You know, when you say that the women are more compromising as a, you know, or whatever it people are people. And, and I've had women and men bosses. I've had horrible on both sides. I don't know that it really matters what sex they are. I, I will tell you that I believe this. I think people, women who are powerful and who display that power are a lot of times are vilified for it because they don't come yeah. across as feminine. They don't come across in the ways that men like to see women, right? But I don't know that there is a difference. You know what I mean? I don't know. To say that women are more this well, way. Well, you're talking about politics here. And, and the question is, can a woman fight on the same level as men? Not because they're not capable of, 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 of winning, but because men fight dirty and women don't fight as dirty. What about women that sleep their way to the top like Kamala Harris? Oh, shut up, Phil. Oh, she didn't. Shut up, Phil. Just shut up. the yep. fuck up. Browns. State, Phil, he was Phil, I will not. Uh, it hurts in the top you know, anyway. see, the house in California, the most powerful politician in California for more than twenty years, and uh, she, you know, what, well, did she what, sleep what, her way to the what, top? Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who, who did she say she slept with? Willie Brown. Okay, how do you know that? It's common knowledge. No, it's not common knowledge, Phil. It's your knowledge. It's what you wanted to hear. <laughs> and if she wanted to sleep with Willie Brown. Yeah. Uh, that's her. That's her. Her. Uh, her choice. You know, just because you sleep, and if she was sleeping with him for twenty years, they must. They must have had a long-term relationship, which doesn't right. exactly but, make it sleeping with him to get to the top. Right. He said that he was Speaker of the House for twenty years, and the most powerful person in California. And uh, but the affair occurred between uh, she, who was a, in the DA's office, mm -hmm. and, uh, and Willie Brown, and she became DA with his support. Uh, and it's it's common yeah, knowledge. So I'm, so uh, well. So who cares, Phil? You Can, know it. People can't sleep with other people. They aren't allowed to. I said. It's oh, what you're no, what you are is a sexist he, asshole who thinks that she had to sleep her way to the top to I'll get the job. Another thing, I like working for women bosses that wear at least six inch high heel shoes. But <laughs> I believe that uh, you know Kamala Harris uh, made her way up in uh, by uh, uh, selective relationships. And, you know, that's, and that's the way that, that's, that's a leap. That, that's totally unfounded. No, that's a leap. Alex knows it. No, I don't know it. Yeah, well, you know. And, and if she did, if she did, I think there were better guys she could have slept with. Not uh, the most but powerful but, but if she wanted, to, you know, a woman has a right. A woman has a right to do a lot of things. She has a right to her own body, and she has a right to decide who she sleeps with. And she doesn't well, need a Phil Meyer telling her who she can sleep with yeah, or who I she did. can't sleep with. Right. And what you're trying to do is say that she, her only talent was fucking. That's really no. what you're saying, Phil. And she happens to be a very right. accomplished woman. Now you're not listening. No, Just I am listening. I'm listening to a sexist pig. Uh, what I said was women like Kamala Harris could sleep their way to the top, which is a power that men don't have as much as women. And women can do it. I gave Kamala Harris as a example. You don't think some but guys she, haven't slept their way to the top? It uh, doesn't work for me. Well, I know it doesn't work for you, but there are. you don't think there are gay congressmen and senators and people uh, in power? Yeah, what, what was uh, what was the guy's name uh, that? Uh, uh, Nazi boy. <laughs> no, no, no. He was he was uh, in in the Congress. Um, uh, heavy set gay guy. He got in in trouble for uh, having an affair with. Uh, oh, Barney uh, Frank. Barney Frank. Barney Frank. Frank. That's yeah. it. Barney Frank. Yes, Barney Frank. there are people that have used. Uh, uh, gay men to sleep their way to the top, and I, I would imagine that there are women bosses that have been attracted to um, male uh, suitors, even uh, straight ones, uh, that got themselves promoted 
because of uh, uh, their ability to sleep their way to the top. Mm -hmm. But it, don't you agree that it happens more with women, and that's one of their no. uh, powers of no. persuasion? No, I think that uh, I think it happens. Uh, it, 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 women have been put in a position of having to in order to get their way to the top, uh, and in in the past. Uh, but I don't think they necessarily did it to get their way to the top. I mean, now that now it's a little harder for guys to use that kind of muscle to get some woman to go down on them, okay? Well, well let I'm me speaking. finish. Just shut up and listen, Phil. Yeah. The point is that today things have changed a little bit, but up until now, women have almost been forced to be put in those positions in order to keep their jobs, not just to get them, but to keep them, okay? Let me give you another example. Weinstein. Uh, what about all the actresses that slept their way to the top, and and that? Oh, was, oh, but oh, oh, but, uh, but because he used his power to get them to sleep with him, they're the slut, right? It, it's a two-way street. You got no, a choice. Uh, no, it isn't a two-way street, Phil. If somebody has the power and they use that power in order to have sex with someone, they are taking unfair advantage of them. There's, that should never be put out as a carrot. No, it may be a carrot, but they made a choice. Phil, said, I can't, I I, the, the, the nonsense you're spewing is just amazing. It's just amazing. Never going to convince anybody of anything. It's, too, it's, it's red and blue opinions, and, and the twain shall never well, meet. Well, how is it, how, no way to convince how Phil is this gonna be that a red, that's a power play. How is this going to be a red and blue decision? I mean, sexism is not red or blue. Sexism no. is sexism. It's abhorrent. But, but the, it's the disgusting. Perception. You know, the perception is. I mean, right? it's uh, the perception Weinstein. Of what happened. Weinstein, who is probably one of the most despicable people in Hollywood, is one of the biggest liberals in Hollywood. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. So but it's no, not it's a red or blue thing. Though. The other guy that killed himself in prison. Um, Epstein. Epstein. <laughs> killed himself. <laughs> well, yeah, he didn't kill himself. <laughs> you know, the half billionaire. He uh, supposedly he died in prison. Uh, he was a, a, a big uh, a blue supporter, you know, uh, and See, my, more my, pictures my point Trump isn't than Hillary. my point is my point isn't that red uh, people or, you know, people on, on, on the conservative side are doing the, uh, you know, both sides are capable of of the act. It's the perception of what that act is, is what I'm talking about. It it. it you're not going to change the perception. People look at it like Phil. Phil looks at it and says, you have a choice mm -hmm. and you shouldn't be intimidated. And then the other side looks at it, the the, the more uh, liberal side looks at it and says, that's a power play. And I'm in fear for my career. And this person could blackball me. And that's a power play over me, a power that this person has over me. And he's powerful in his career and can destroy me. And so I give in to this. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. Well. So, and that's a red and blue thing. That's what I mean. I agree with you, Rob. I'm, I'm going to look at it from a different perspective. <laughs> really? Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't see people as victims. I see them as having a choice and uh, giving into a weakness. Well, then, or, then, wait a minute. Then I guess uh, I guess six, six million Jews weren't victims. Uh, yeah, they were. But, okay, uh, then shut up, it, Phil, because there are victims. It was done by a gun. It was done. Uh, uh, they they were conned into getting on those trains. Uh, you know, this this was a this was a psychopath uh, that did that, and it had nothing to do with someone's career or uh, whether they're going to sleep their way to the top. This this was just pure hate and evil. Uh, that created the Holocaust. No, I see, and everybody, nobody, there are no other victims then. Okay, I'm glad to know that. Uh, okay, uh, yes, yeah. yes, Jason, yes, Jason. So I, I guess I am going to kind of agree with Phil to the smallest point. Oh. My mom had the opportunity when she was working for a company to move her way up the ladder, as she would have gave in a little bit. She chose not to, so she didn't wasn't able to work her way up the ladder. Because she didn't sleep with the boss. Your mom was hot. <laughs> I'm sure she was an attractive-looking woman in her time. Yeah. Got pictures. <laughs> she's your age, Phil. You might still think she's hot. <laughs> what do you think about it? <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, that that's unfortunate that she wasn't able to make her way up the ladder because she wasn't willing to sleep with the boss. 
Yeah. So yeah, she made the choice not to do it, but she also wasn't able to advance her career. Is that fair? Consequences. <laughs> Sometimes one door closes and another opens. Mm, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> or it just closed because you didn't open yours. <laughs> Phil, I'm. I, it was her I, door Phil, that closed, Phil, and it Phil, was the promotion uh, door that didn't open. <laughs> I don't say this very often, but I'm feeling very uncomfortable with your position on this. I'm feeling uncomfortable with it because I consider it terribly sexist and demeaning to women. What? Because his uh, don't because stop, read stop, his mother, Phil, the stop, and, Phil, and stop. The right and you made jokes about is his mother hot? You know, come uh, on, hey, hey, enough I'll, is I'll enough. I feel uncomfortable with, with all that. I'll be honest with you too. My mom does put a lot of like the Harvey Weinstein blame on the women. It's like <laughs> women been doing that forever. She's like, I chose not to. Yeah. Yeah. You. Know, you. Uh, 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 women. I think we have somebody put his hand up there. Uh, uh, did, did you put your hand up, uh, Alan? No, I didn't. Oh, I you didn't. Probably just moved one side to the other. Oh, I, oh, I was wondering because I hadn't heard from you all night. So I was wondering. Yeah. I've been uh, owned by a few other people. So, uh, you know, I think we're bored with this topic. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> and and by, the, by the way, I, I just saw, no, I got a note from um, from uh, Josh. And yes, it was you, Uh um, Jason, um, that oh. bothered him because he says every time he he's on and you're on, every time he starts talking, it, you start interrupting what he's saying. It, it was the biggest thing. I think that we had a conversation. It was about the South or whatever, about certain people, you know. Well, I but I, I, I understand Southern because Josh is not the most uh, uh, how can we call it, most aggressive person on a panel like this. And when he starts talking, we should give him room. Uh, yeah. Because he needs it. He can't, you know, uh, and some people are more aggressive than others. Like Phil, we can't fucking shut up, you know. Um, the, you know, Rob, Rob waits for his best shot. Kevin waits for his best shot. Uh, Charlie waits for his best shot. Jeff waits for his best shot about once a week. Uh, Sibby Itty uh, waits for his best shot. But there's, we, we, and we have to have everybody kind of wait for their best shot. Mm -hmm. With my waistline, I always make my own room. <laughs> oh, boy. He, he didn't even get what I was saying. Jeez. It stepped on a ball all over the yeah. place. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, but anyway, um, I, um, uh, I, just, I just think that we are in a time of where, you know, I, I agree with the, the speech that uh, Cuomo gave yesterday about this isn't a white or uh, red or blue issue, you know. This yeah. is a people issue. And that there, there's no room for red and blue. And the idea that, oh, hey, we won't uh, uh, bail out a, a state that's going under because it's a blue state, which is Mitch McConnell's attitude, is all yeah. wrong, you know. And, and uh, I agree that, that this has to stop. It just has to stop. Yes, Jason. So maybe the blue states should stop putting in more money that then they were receiving from the federal government. So then the red states will stop receiving more money there you than go. what they're putting into the federal government. Well, there's one of the things he was griping about with Mitch McConnell is he said, Mitch, he says, you know, the, uh, the city, state of New York puts money in for taxes to the federal government every year in the state of New York. And it takes back less than it gives. OK. Meanwhile, Kentucky puts out money and takes back more than it gives. And that New York, yep. in fact, is supporting Kentucky. So right. shut up, Mitch. You know, exactly. You get your bourbon from if you don't pay in, you know, Kentucky gives back more they <laughs> back as bourbon. Was that a. a, a <laughs> uh, so the biggest economies outside of Texas, right? The biggest economies. Are mm -hmm. all blue, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah most, it's where all the money comes well, from. Where all the we, taxes come from. We're, we're, and Texas will be blue soon enough. Well, uh, well, New York and California and Florida is Illinois. Sort of, I, 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 I think it has. What does it have to do with? Florida, do you think in particular? Yeah. I mean, New York is is definitely the. It's the biggest state in the country. Everybody says, why is it like a quarter of all the deaths in the country, a third of all the deaths in the country happen in New York? It's because. The, a large amount of the population resides in New York City. 
<laughs> I think something like uh, the major cities that have had the problem with the coronavirus are all cities that fall within about a third of the population of the country. You know, so that's that's why these states have such high rates. But other states are now getting them too. Yes, Jeff. Uh, we, New York also has the, the highest percentage of, of children. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, also the number of old people, uh, mm-hmm. number of people who are dying, the people who are living. So, yeah. You know, New York's a, a high percentage of the of the population. Period. Yeah, and, and and everybody tries to un create something that doesn't exist. And what ha- what happened? What happened here in New York is we were the victims of Trump closing down China coming into this country because what it did is it sent those Chinese people to Europe to get a plane from there to come to New York, or as as Cuomo said today, he said, Mitch, he said. Not a lot of people are flying directly into Kentucky, okay? Uh, and, and, and what, he, what, he, what happens is that these people were coming over through Europe and spreading it at whatever port of call they were at there and then came here. And, mm-hmm. and, and his, his closing down China didn't do a damn thing. Jason's got his hand up. Miss Jason. So... Also, maybe we have to look at, originally, there were certain airports that were ports of entry from other countries, Mm -hmm. and that they would be doing the advanced screening. Well, you know, now we know plenty of people are asymptomatic, you know, not having any symptoms at all. So you just let them through. You didn't run a temperature, so welcome to our city. That's probably, Detroit was one of those airports that was one of the, you know, the testing centers. So right. maybe plenty of people just they were able to pass well, right through because well, they didn't show the same symptoms. Well, Brian, uh, you, you know, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we've now found out the first two cases in the country were in uh, Santa Clara County, in um, uh, yeah. right down <clears throat> near where Kevin lives, um, yeah. and they had no record of them ever having been in China or traveling outside the country. So somehow they got it without going to China to get it. And so yeah, China right. cannot really be blamed for this whole thing because it originated in Santa Clara County. Yes, Phil? Yeah. Uh, well, I sent you the article uh, on that, and I guess uh, she worked for a, uh, uh, a, a technology company. Lim that, Research. Uh, yeah, Lim oh. Research, uh, that had uh, contacts in, uh, with uh, the Chinese national. Uh, Chinese at the time, and that may have been how it spread. And she, you know, uh, all I'm saying is that that the current uh, uh, plague that we have in this country right now uh, is as a result not of, uh, of of Chinese nationals necessarily coming into this country, but the seed was right there. Okay, you know that De Blasio mismanaged early on uh, oh. when was telling people to take the subway and... Do you know uh, what he's mismanaged the most? All of New York City. Okay, so uh, uh, don't start with me on de Blasio. Yes, Kevin. Kevin. Yes, Kevin. If you, and I'm not a, uh, a big fan of Rachel Maddow, but if you look at her show last night, she had a, uh, a pretty good interview. I just happened across it after the show last night when uh, she had a good interview with the... Uh, health secretary of Santa Clara County and everything she went through and all the decisions she made about, uh, what they did here. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a pretty good interview really with, you know, how she basically was, uh, on Friday, the 13th of March, Mm -hmm. how she was basically, you know, making the decisions to shut down everything here in California and, and the, the Bay area and what it, what it, you know, the consequences of what she did and what, you know the the group of people that she was doing it with. Uh, it's a pretty good interview. It's only about you know five or ten minutes long, but you might want to check it out if you can. Well, you know California has 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 not had a big has not had the brunt of this problem, and I think it's the because they did do something about is, it beforehand. Is, you know, yeah, the decisions that she made. Yeah, are, we're feeling it today because that that line never really got to be a hump. Right, right. Yeah, it was a slow. A slow curve, but 
it never got to be a, a V curve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, we're we're um, you know, this has got to stop being a bled, a bled, a red and blue thing. It's just got to stop. We're, we're, During the next year, never going to happen. What 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 you what what'd you say? I said, during an election year, unlikely it's not going to be a, a political thing. You know no something? Way. So and, far. And that's unfortunate, you know, because in defense of Trump, he could have been a hero in this whole freaking thing. He could have absolutely been a hero. Absolutely. And he just screwed that up royally. He could have, he could have gone up there and, and guaranteed his election, his reelection. He could have guaranteed it. But I don't, I don't know that he did that. <laughs> well, I mean, this is Giuliani this is... turned a lot of people around. There were a lot of people that didn't like Giuliani when 9/11 happened, and he right. just led and turned everybody around. Yeah. Everybody loved Giuliani. And yeah. I'm not so sure that there was people in his cabinet let him run wild. Well, the thing right. is, the thing is exactly. that this was, I have to say, the biggest audition anybody has had for president of the United States. Here you have a guy who's president, and he is not acting presidential. He is acting like a buffoon, and all of this is totaling up to maybe losing him the election because he. Well, how do we he, know? How do we know that there's not people in his cabinet that are fed up with his ass and letting him run wild so that he gets the hell out? Well, that That's could really, that could be that could totally definitely possible be. because I don't know. Like for instance, I you know uh, Dr. Bricks yesterday, the look on her face. I don't know if oh, you saw it was, it was amazing. She was sitting there going, "Are you fucking saying that to me?" And looking down at the floor, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. So she didn't have to look at him, look him in the face. Yes, Jason. Uh, I think the whole entire country would look at Trump differently if he just let Pence talk. I, I'm not a fan of Trump. I don't like Trump. I you know fuck him. He can go. But if Pence was the one sitting up there speaking every day and saying, hey, the president is too busy right now to be doing this. You know, he's handling this kind of stuff. This is what we are doing. It, it, it'd make him, you know, he would actually probably look good right now, but he's he can't. He cannot do it. Well, he I'll, is I'll, just yeah, I'll say this. I'll say, a favor today by not answering questions. Well, no, he <laughs> actually turned around. He chickened out today, and he just turned around and walked out before they, they asked him any questions. Uh the thing is that I think the way he's doing these press conferences is he saw what Cuomo was doing. Cuomo <laughs> was successful at it. The networks love picking him up because it's a good, good show for an hour of, of, of what's happening, you know. And uh, he said, oh, I'll do the same thing. But he's not capable of doing that. Okay, I think a, he saw Pence getting the attention, and that's why he had to take over. No, no, no he, saw, he saw, he saw, he saw, he saw, he saw Cuomo getting the attention. Cuomo, he yeah. he didn't start doing it until Cuomo had had a good head start over him on this. You and know? they say he goes in and watches it afterwards. Uh, really? <laughs> and eats French fries. Okay. <laughs> Corona fries. Yeah, Corona fries. Yeah. Corona fries. Yeah, wow. Well, that can't be true. You know, we, uh, no, we uh, that's what geez. I saw on the way up before I came up with the show. They said that he goes and watches TV afterwards and French, eats French fries, fries and, and shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, he does watch but that. A lot was of probably TV. that was probably the mail, Daily Mail or something. I saw. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm gonna Funny. play the theme there. Uh, yeah. uh oh, that wow. time. Another big show tonight. A lot of people watching it. A lot of people uh, involved in it. Uh, I'm sorry to uh, to uh, um, Josh. Please, Josh. Sorry, Josh. I only call in once a month. Uh, just, uh, I'm sorry, Josh. Don't don't let this inhibit you from calling because we like we love having your your mind on the show. Let me thank everybody who's here. Brian, thank you. Jeff, thank you. Charlie, thank you. Rob, always thank you. Uh, uh, Phil, thank you. Uh, thanks to Kevin. Thanks to um, uh, 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 Alan Kroger. Uh, uh, thanks to uh, Josh and thanks to Sibby Itty. Hey, I got them all. Everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's the Citizen Panel as it was constituted tonight. Uh, I thank them for joining me and, uh, uh, and also to you, uh, Josh. Thank you for calling and uh, if you call next time you call, I will make sure this does not happen again. Okay, uh, I will. 
I will defer to you. Okay? All right. Anyway. Hey, that's it. I, we've run out of time. Uh, the uh, intersection is next with Jack Bishop over most of this same gab net. Uh, and then we will be back again on uh, Tuesday. Yes, at 1030. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Have a nice weekend, everybody, and stay safe and stay the fuck at home. <laughs>